Want to know the first step in gaining control over your mail? It starts right here. Before we get started, here's an important tip. Make it a habit to handle your mail as soon as you can. There are three steps I take to process my incoming mail and documents. Purge, sort, and processing. Purge any unwanted or junk mail from your incoming mail before taking it to your office or location where you process your mail. These are normally circulars you're not interested in, pamphlets or advertisement, and credit card offers. A great idea is to have at least three containers or bins that are marked trash, recycle, or shred. Once you purge your mail, you can set it aside until you're able to sort or process. Now I know there are going to be times where you just can't get to the mail as soon as you get into the house. Have a box labeled Mail Processing. You can put your mail in this box daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, however you process your mail. And then when things slow down or you're able to get to it, you can sit down and process your mail. The next thing is sorting your mail. Sort your processed mail depending on your family needs or lifestyles. I use to pay, to file, to call, and to read. You can choose as many as you need and label your bins or trays accordingly. Now, you know my rule. Shop your home first for those trays and bins. You can use an old shoe box covered with crap paper or an old document sorter or even a wall hanging unit. Search your home before purchasing at an office supply store. And lastly is processing your mail. Create a mail processing center in your office or the location where you pay your bills. It can be something fixed or transportable that you can take with you to any location. A document sorter is an excellent container as a transportable mail center. Using colorful file folders and different patterns, processing your mail can be pleasant, pretty, and organized. Now that I've given you some tips on taming that incoming mail, Let's take a look at how I go about processing my mail. Okay guys, I'm going to go through how I go about processing my mail. Where we are now, we are in a room next to the garage entrance, which is very convenient when we come in. We can hang our coats here. There's a bulletin board up here where it shows you appointments, events, or anything that's going on for the month. I hang my purse on the back of the door. So the mail here on this ledge which serves as a great place for me to lay out the mail and categorize them. So as you notice, there is a chalkboard in the center of this mail sorting center. And this is used for any messages or uh, lists that we need to make or remind ourselves. And that we will put it here on this chalkboard. On both sides of the chalkboard, you will see bins. These bins came from Office Max, and I don't know if this sale is still going on, but you can buy two items from the C. Jane Work line and get the third one free. On the right hand side, you will see there is a letter on the bin, and it's a letter O, which represents office. So all the mail that will be processed will go in the office, so it will go in that bin. On the other side, you see two R's. The top bin is for recycle. The bottom, bottom bin is my husband's area for where I put his mail. So that's his initial. So first thing that I do, I put my mail here on this ledge and then I complete my chores for the day and once everything is done, I come back here and sort the mail. And how I go by doing that, each piece would go in a certain pile or category and that category is in the office, recycle, trash, brandy, or it can be shred what have you, whatever category I have, and then it be put in the appropriate bin. At the end of the day, the documents that's in the office bin will go 
transfer to the office and there it has a mail holding area where it will stay there until the end of the week. Okay, we are at the front entrance of my office and we're looking at the holding area for all the processed mail. All the mail on a daily basis that come from the sorting area is put in this location. At the top here is where my correspondence and bills would go and then down at the bottom is where the magazines and sale papers would go. So this is just an area to keep my mail out of the way and off my desk and a location where I know all the processed mail is at. And I just take it out of here at the end of the week and take it to the mail processing center where it can be processed. The last stage in my mail processing is the filing. This is my action filing system. At the end of the week, the mail rests here in this tray until Saturday or Sunday when I process my mail. The action filing center or zone is zone three in my office organization. The action file are correspondence or documents requiring an action before discarding or filing, such as mail you would probably see only once, files you are waiting to take action on. On Saturday or Sunday, before I start processing, I open each mail from the envelope and glance at the document for any inaccuracies or red flags that needs my attention. Post-it notes are used on each document that has a suspense date or awaiting a reply. For example, for bills, I will post the due date on the post-it note. Invitations, a reply by date. Appointment reminders, there would be an appointment date. And return receipts, I write awaiting refund and then the date that I purchased or returned the merchandise. The action file system has three wall files. The action are documents that would be placed in either to pay, to file, to call, or to cancel. Once the action is completed, it is either shredded or scanned. All documents to be scanned goes in the next bin. This is where I have several categories, catalogs, household, business, and taxes. After scanning the document, it is shredded unless it's anything related to state or federal matters, licenses or deeds, retirement, mortgages, or the, my business. These documents are kept in my safe or my binder system. I will link my binder system video in the right corner if you haven't seen it yet. Below the action file is a small cabinet. I keep all of my shipping and mailing supplies in here. The top drawer are for my correspondence. There are envelopes, large, small, and note card size address labels, rubber stamps for documents that I want to stamp for whatever action I'm going to be doing on that document, postage stamps, custom address labels for BPB and household, mailing seals for BPB or an, a box opener and an envelope opener. Below the cabinet are for shipping boxes and pack packages and there's tape here and uh, labels for Priority and Priority Express Mail. So that's what I have here in my action file system. Here are some tips and some ideas to put you on the right course to managing your incoming mail. Tip number one, designate a convenient area or space for your mail drop spot. Having a small bin or tray keeps the mail in one location and keeps the counter clutter to a minimum. Have it small enough for one to two weeks of mail to keep it manageable. Tip number two, post a trash, recycle, or shred bin near your drop zone for purging any junk mail. Pinch junk mail immediately. You will be awarded with a significant smaller pile of mail to process. Tip number three, don't designate an area just for paying bills. Create a portable filing system to process in any area of the home so you can work anywhere you like. 
Label those files that works for your family. Here's a few tips and ideas to keep the junk mail from entering your home to a minimum. The less junk mail you have entering your home, the less time you have doing mail processing. Let's take a look. Tip number one, streamline incoming paper. Elect online bill payments instead of paper. Some utility services let you set up automated payments as an option. Stop those unwanted magazines and catalogs. Sign up at catalogchoice.org. Tip number two, magazines and catalogs. Separate bulky magazines and catalogs from your incoming mail. Designate a reading area, like a basket or container, to read at your leisure. And the last tip, tip number three, opt out. You can reduce the amount of mail by opting out of all your credit card offers for five years, or you can do it permanently. Call 1-888-5-OPT-OUT for more information. Organizing your mail can be an easy and pleasurable chore if you have a practical and efficient system. Well, that would conclude the video for today. I hope I've given you some ideas and some tips you can use to set up your own mail organization system. If you have any questions, please leave them below. And if you have any suggestions, I like those too. Until the next video, my friends, smooches!